Senator Tining spent 48 years following the passage of his law still trying to clean up the Big Lick animal cruelty racket and protect the horses. I'm here to see that this work or his work is carried on. I'm so grateful to the Tidings family and particularly Ben Tidings Smith for carrying on his granddad's legacy to the end of this, this despicable animal cruelty. The recent election was one that will hopefully prove to make life better for these horses. I'm told that the Tidings fellow Marylanders, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, and Majority Leader Steny Hoyer knew Senator Tidings well, knew Senator Tidings well, and they want to also help protect the horses. In fact, Majority Leader Hoyer has been a co-sponsor of the PAST Act in every Congress since it was first introduced. Last month, the PAST Act reached the 290 co-sponsor mark in the House, a number that is significant under the new rules and one that shows at least two-thirds of the House publicly supports the legislation that's also endorsed by the American Horse Council, American Veterinary Medical Association, American Association of Equine Practitioners, the National Sheriff's As Association, and countless other groups and individuals across the nation. Representative Steve Cohen from Memphis has been a tremendous leader on this issue, a white knight, one who has burned the midnight oil to help protect the horses and the great state of Tennessee. That has been marred by soaring for more than half a century. He's the only member of the Tennessee delegation that's been willing to speak out and step up to help, and I commend him, all of us do here. Along with Rep. Ted Yoho from Florida, Kurt Schrader from Oregon, and Senators Mike Crapo from Idaho, and Mark Warner from Virginia, who have also championed this effort. With the Democrats now in the majority in the House, the time has come to bring this legislation and the horses the vote they have so long deserved. We know we have a great friend and House Majority Leader Steny Hoyer and hope that he takes the lead in introducing, uh, I'm sorry, and he, we hope he takes the lead and introduces in the past act along with Reps Cohen, Yoho, Schrader, and others and rename the bill the U.S. Senator Joseph D. Tidings Memorial Pass Act to honor of uh, uh, Senator Tidings' legacy. I also ask that Speaker Pelosi, Mr. Hoyer, and House Energy and Commerce Committee Chairman Frank Pallone swiftly expedite the vote that will prove the majority of Americans stand with us on this issue. Timing is ripe, and the majority of Americans want to see Congress work to protect these iconic American horses upon whose back our country was built. Now, in saying this, the horses do not need these things for a gate, a high gate. They come naturally. So, I don't know if all of you know, but they have a natural gate. It's a beautiful gate. And for these, this to happen, for these things on their feet, I wish every one of you could come here and try to lift this. And this is what they're going through. And they, when they try to, like he said earlier, lift that leg up, it's from the pain that was, that was taken from this and the pain that they carry on. So it's time to get this done and we're all here and hope that, you know, this progress is made. Thank you very much. Without their permission, where we sent out 7,000 postcards, or if they didn't know anything about the 3,000 showed up in the mail, and it was a yes, no, whether you remove the pads and chains. This is in 2013. They almost died. Okay? They control everything, but by God, they didn't control this. And I said, you'll never count the votes. Guess what? We had a CPA count the votes. The vote was 63% in favor of the PAST Act, and this is in 2013 by the people that own walking horses. They breed them. 37%. That shows you how small group. Sturby set it in motion. He gets a lot of credit. I don't give him credit for everything, but I give him credit for that. He supported it, and he had to leave the state because of it. And he's, thank goodness he's here doing what he's doing. And let me get this picture off of that screen. Um, one thing I'd like to follow up with Ms. Presley very briefly. She is revered in Tupelo, Mississippi. That's the birthplace of Elvis, Mississippi. It's also, we have a friend there. His name is Roger Wicker. Oh, okay, sure. Roger Wicker is the senior United States Senator from the state of Mississippi. 
Mr. Wicker, Senator Wicker, is going to be chairman of the Commerce Committee. We got some work to do with our friend Roger. <laughs> anyway, I think Roger, I love Roger's father. I met him when I was a young man, and he inspired me too. He's, he's cut from the right cloth. We just need to, and he'll listen to her. Now, those gentlemen to my left, I need an introduction. Wayne, come on up here. Wayne has made a difference. Wayne has set it in motion. Wayne deserves a lot of credit, a whole lot of credit. Well, uh, it's hard to follow Clant. I mean, is he one of a kind or what? He is, uh, is you know, Clant is just indomitable. You know, he just keeps charging ahead. There are mortars and things hitting around him, and he just keeps moving forward. Clant, I'm really grateful to you for all that you've done. You've sacrificed a tremendous amount to see this through, and thank you for pulling us together. It's great to have Ben involved. Thank you, Ben, and, and uh, grateful to your family, and your granddad was an amazing guy who has created an amazing legacy of policy for the rest of us to build upon. And Priscilla, thank you very, very much for being such a voice, and my colleague Marty Irby, um, who really was the head of the Tennessee Walking Horse Breeders and Exhibitors Association, wanted to see reform, uh, and then was kind of pushed out of the industry when he spoke about this problem. So we're really grateful to, to you, Marty, for all that you've done. You know, I have, uh, I studied, studied U.S. Western history, and if you study 19th century American history, you see horses everywhere. I mean, horses led us into battle, uh, they transported our goods, they transported us, they were companions. You think about the sacrifices of all the domesticated animals that have made for humanity's benefit. The horse changed, changed our notions of time and space. They have done so much. The least we can do, the least we can do is be decent to them. It's not just that they attach these things to their feet, is they injure their feet. They burn their feet with chemicals. They put foreign objects in their feet, and then they compound the damage by having these on their feet. So all they can do is just throw their legs up uh, to avoid some of the pain, but obviously it doesn't cause the pain to leave because then they've got to put their feet down because they can't fly. I mean, this is barbarism. I was unaware of it until a few years ago. And, you know, I have devoted my adult life to trying to help animals because I saw in them innocence, I saw vulnerability, and I saw in us that we hold all the power in the relationship with these creatures. It's really, um, the animal protection movement is really more about us than it is about them. It's how we handle the immense power that we have. And when you really take that framework and then you start to work on these issues and try to say, okay, we're, we want to stop cruelty, and you learn about the details of cruelty. You learn about Japan using exploding harpoons to kill whales, the biggest animals that have ever lived on the planet. You learn about hunters who shoot animals in fenced enclosures, animals that are sometimes drugged and shoot them at point blank range to mount a trophy in canned hunts. You learn about cockfighting, that it's not just the birds fighting, but they attach knives to their legs to accentuate the bloodletting and expedite the outcome of the fight. You think, this is so diabolical. How could people do this to animals? When you think about abuses of the horse, you think, my God, this is diabolical. It's medieval. This looks like medieval hardware. And it's the 21st century. I mean, we are shedding cruelty. We're passing laws to protect farm animals. We have felony level penalties for cruelty. How can this persist? Clant is right. It's a small group of individuals who have been able, through parliamentary maneuvering, to thwart progress that is supported by 95% of Americans. This is not some, you know, close call. When you count the votes of the American people, this is lopsided because no decent person can support this. The people who do it try to hide it. They try to tell people, you know, when we lobby on these issues, we don't do this, we would never do that. Well, Marty was the person at the top of the industry. He has seen it with his own eyes time and time again and knows people who made a business of this practice. So, <clears throat> you know, the process of representative government can be exasperating. 
you know, here you have this incredible, overwhelming support where lawmakers publicly align themselves with legislation. 290 of 435, and many of that remaining 145 would vote for it. So, so these people decided, okay, I'm going to put my name on it even before there's a vote, and we haven't been able to get a proper debate and a series of votes on this issue. And I do think Clant is right. This is now, we're going to see a, a, a break in this process in the House. We're going to get a vote on this soon.